we have a question. The time period and frequency of a spring attached to the mass is T and F. Okay. If the mass is attached to a new spring of twice the spring constant, then the new time period and frequency are. Hmm. We haven't given that there's a spring to which a mass is attached. And let's say the spring has a spring constant K. This is the current spring, first one, okay? And it's given it has a time period T and it has a frequency of F. What I would first like to do is derive an expression for T and F, okay? So the best way to do that, I like the best way is to use Newton's second law and do it. There's another way, which is by using energy considerations. Maybe we'll do that some other time, as of now that's not needed. So what I want to do is I'm going to displace this spring a little bit like so and try to use Newton's second law to derive some expression for this. Okay, so let's this let's call this direction as positive and that's my displacement x. So this is positive. Okay, how many forces are acting on this? There's only one force and that's a spring force and the spring force acts this way and that's going to be minus kx. So we can now apply Newton's second law. F equals minus kx. So ma equals minus kx. Notice it's a restoring force and a simple harmonic motion. And therefore it's going to be m d square x by dt squared equals minus kx. I'm going to write this as a little differently. I'm going to divide the whole thing by m. I'm going to put everything on one side d squared x by dt squared plus k divided by m times x equal to zero. And I want you to stare at this equation very carefully because we'll be using this equation a lot. Whenever you see an equation which has this particular form, double differentiation of some quantity plus some numerical constant which does not depend on x values or this quantity values, multiplied by x equal to zero, it's always going to be an SHM. This is the differential equation for SHM, or we're gonna call this as free SHM. Free SHM means uh, it's not uh, subjected to an external force. So the forces are always within the system, like the spring or the pendulum and stuff like that. But there's no external agency who's gonna pull it and do everything, it's all natural. So it's free to oscillate about, uh, free to do its oscillations. Because, so this is the equation for free oscillations. I'm gonna write down the general equation for free oscillations, free SHM. The general equation for free SHM is always going to be of the form d square x by dt square. This doesn't have to be x, it can be y, it can be theta, it can be, it can be anything. It can be even a charge or a voltage or a velocity or acceleration, anything you want. Plus, whatever comes over here is always going to be omega squared times that same quant quantity over here, x, should be equal to zero. This is the general differential equation for free SHM. And we need to understand what omega is. Omega is called as the angular frequency. It's the angular frequency. Now, if you're like me, then you would be wondering, what's, what's this whole angular business about? I mean, look at this. This particular thing is going to oscillate this way, right? If it's oscillating like this, what, what angles are we talking about? Well, think of it this way. Look, we want, <clears throat> uh, think of it this way, look, okay. So for some reason, we like to consider a simple harmonic motion as having some sort of a connection with a circular motion. There is some small connection between them and we're gonna see what that connection is. Anyways, a simple harmonic motion can be connected to a uniform circular motion. They're not the same things, of course, but they can be connected. And when you do that, what we can assume is one complete oscillation is the same as one complete circular motion, one, one full rotation. And that's where this angular frequency business comes into picture. So if you have one oscillation, so if you have a frequency, well, let's, let's say, for example, you have a frequency of uh, two hertz, frequency of two hertz, then it means two rotations, but uh, not, not, not two rotations, two oscillations per second, right? Two oscillations per second. Now it can be thought of as a circular motion. And so we can say this is also the same as two rotations per second. And two rotations per second 
also means 2 times 2 pi radians per second. And that is what omega is. Omega is how many radians per second if it was rotating, okay? So notice, to calculate radians per second, you just have to multiply 2 pi with the frequency. If something is having 10 oscillations per second, you can think of it as 10 rotations per second, and it becomes 10 times 2 pi radians per second. So omega is always going to be 2 pi times f. That's going to be the angular frequency. And that angular frequency is over here in this differential equation. Therefore, every single time you form this differential equation, figure out what this number is, and whatever that constant is, that quantity is, it's going to be omega square. So we immediately understand from these two that omega square must be equal to k divided by m, and omega, therefore, is going to be the square root of k divided by m. And so we now have the frequency. The frequency is going to be 1 by 2 pi. This is 2 pi f, right? So f is going to be 1 by 2 pi into the square root of k divided by m. That's the formula for the frequency for a spring, not in general, only for a spring. And uh, the time period is always the opposite, the, the reciprocal of this. So that's going to be 2 pi square root of m by k. That's the time period. All right. So this is a simple idea behind this. Now think about it. The frequency is found to be related directly to spring constant, and that makes a lot of sense. If the spring constant is high, the spring is very stiff, and in a stiff spring, you would expect fast oscillations, so the frequency would go up. Makes a lot of sense. Also notice the frequency decreases with mass. Well, if you attach like an elephant over here, and you stretch it, the force is gonna remain the same, right? Because the force does not depend on the mass. The force only depends on the, uh, on this extension. So if you put an elephant over here, it's gonna get a very small acceleration. And because of the small acceleration, it'll end up having, it'll end up having a very high value for the frequency. So we can now use this to try and answer our question. Our question was, what would happen if the mass was attached to a new spring with twice the spring constant. So our new frequency, which I will write using, say, green, our new frequency would be 1 by 2 pi square root of 2k divided by m. And that is root 2 times f, because there's a root 2 extra. Similarly, our new time period it's going to be 2 pi square root of m divided by 2k. And so that's going to be t divided by root 2. And that's our answer. That's what we wanted. So we now know what the new time period is going to look like and what the new frequency is going to look like. Notice the frequency has increased because the stiffness constant has increased. K value has increased. Okay, see you next time.